Why are Souls games the best? Why is there so much hype surrounding Shadow of the Earth Tree, the new DLC that will be releasing for Elden Ring in June? Why does it seem that every game that From Software releases is either a Game of the Year nominee or a Game of the Year winner? In this video, I want to go over some of the reasons why I believe that Soulsborne games are the best genre in the current gaming industry. Now, before I go into more specific reasons of why I believe that Souls games are the best, I wanted to share my story of how I personally discovered them. It was 2020 in the midst of the pandemic, and although I had heard of Souls from my friends and seen some funny memes about the games, kept Soulsborne games at arm's length because I was very intimidated by them. I knew the reputation these games had and how hard they were. Still, I did respect them and I knew that they were very popular. However, over time I found myself growing more and more interested in these games, but I finally made the decision when watching the anime Kaguya-sama Love is War when they clearly referenced the game in a comedic scene. I distinctly remember watching that scene and making the decision to pick up Dark Souls 3 for like $10 on the Steam Winter Sale. Now, right off the bat, I realized playing it that this was not my kind of game. I didn't understand the combat, the story, the lore, any of it. I was dying constantly. I couldn't even beat Iodex Gunder for like the first two hours. It was bad. However, as much as I hated this game, and as much as I raged screaming when I would die to the numerous bosses, I had a dangerous realization that I could not put the controller down. Through this process of playing Dark Souls 3, as well as Bloodborne, Sekiro, and later Elden Ring, I would ask myself the question, why am I putting myself through this? Well, the first answer was simple. It was challenging. And I don't just mean challenging in a combat sense or a gameplay sense. It was mentally challenging as well. These games demand you to sharpen yourself mentally and will punish new, lazy players who have the mindset of just wanting to beat bosses quickly with no time invested. I quickly realized in Dark Souls 3 that if you try to do a lot of damage to defeat the boss quickly like in other games, you will be humbled very fast. Still, I would die over and over and over and over and over again. This shit no more, man. But with each death, I would gain more knowledge about the boss. I would learn when they would aggro, when I would need to frame roll perfectly to avoid damage, and when I could back off and heal. Over time, I started to notice that I wouldn't be as angry when losing to certain bosses. I stopped being emotional and more analytical. Why did I lose to this boss? What can I do different? What is in his moveset that I'm having trouble with? When I started becoming less angry and started asking myself these questions, that is when I started learning the game and how to truly excel. How I learned to get good. Through this discovery of asking myself these questions, I realized a very important life lesson within the Souls games. That failure is okay. It's gonna happen. There are gonna be times in life where you feel like no matter what you do, you cannot overcome a certain obstacle or certain difficulty. You're gonna feel hopeless, angry, irritated, because you fail over and over and over again. However, as much as you want to, you must not give up. That is the moment when you truly lose. Instead of being angry and taking it out on externalities, as hard as it is, look inward and ask yourself how you can improve yourself and your mindset to achieve your goals and overcome hardship. From Software teaches us this lesson with their games. I believe it's a valuable lesson that everyone should learn. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. In addition to this lesson, you quickly learn the importance of having patience when you play Souls games. At some point when I was playing through Dark Souls 3 for the first time, I realized that I shouldn't be treating these bosses like fights. I should be treating them more like dances. With myself and the boss reacting to each other's moves, I should enjoy the atmosphere, the music, and yes, as weird as this sounds, I should enjoy the boss itself. There's no reason to rush, unless you're speedrunning, of course. I definitely believe that this can be applied in real life as well. Well, instead of trying to rush through obstacles, we should all take a step back, breathe, and be patient. Be in the moment and enjoy it. Like many of you, I had a lot of trouble with Mark at the Fell Omen when I first started playing Elden Ring, as he is a pretty hard first boss even for Soulsborne standards. While fighting him, he wasn't giving me time to heal, he was countering all of my moves, and he would stretch the fight out for so long. But after a few hours, I finally beat him, and looking back, I realized how important that struggle was for me. I don't look at those hours spent as a waste of time, I look at it as a way of improving myself. That is why beating a boss in the Soulsborne games gives the best feeling of accomplishment because you realize your mental strength and perseverance. Speaking of bosses, I wouldn't be able to gloss over the fact that Souls games have the best boss design that I've ever seen in video games. Rivaling the gameplay itself, these bosses each look and feel unique. 
Some of my favorites in the series include the Soul of Cinder, the Nameless King, Owl Father, Ishin the Sword Saint, Malaketh the Black Blade, and Melania Blade of Mikola. But there are many more that I could mention. From Software knows that their games are dependent on these boss fights, which is why they put so much effort and creativity into these designs. Not only this, but From Software goes out of their way to give you a cinematic cutscene before these fights to build up hype before the fight even begins. And right when you feel like you've done a great job bringing the boss down to half health, you get hit with another awesome cutscene which builds even more hype, realizing that the boss has a harder second phase that you'll have to adapt your playstyle even more. This goes right into the reason why I couldn't put the controller down when I first started playing Dark Souls 3 despite dying numerous times. Soulsborne games are addicting. The reward of beating a boss is not only immensely gratifying, but you receive souls or runes to spend on leveling up your character depending on your playstyle and build that you wish to pursue. As you learn the mechanics of the game, you'll better understand what skills to spend your souls or runes on. This reward system motivates you to continue playing to level up and prepare for the next boss that you'll encounter. Side note, but this is what makes Elden Ring in particular the most approachable for first players getting into the Soulsborne series. When you begin Elden Ring, the first boss you encounter is the Tree Sentinel. Purposefully overleveled, you will find him incredibly difficult to beat when starting the game, but it isn't impossible. From Software gives you a choice though. You can either fight him as is, doing next to no damage and have an incredibly difficult fight, or you can level up, defeat Margit and Godric, and come back and sweep the floor with him. Unlike the other Souls games, From Software purposefully gives players freedom in approaching challenges, which is why I believe that Elden Ring is the easiest out of all the From Software titles. In addition to the boss design, the aesthetic of these games is another way that From Software shines above other developers. Each of the games have their own feeling and vibe that completely sets them apart from each other. I love the rustic, medieval, grim setting of Dark Souls, but Bloodborne's aesthetic is completely different, with a more gothic, haunted, HP Lovecraft-inspired setting setting in a late 1800s Victorian England, or Yarnum. Then you have Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, set in a vibrant feudal Japan, as well as Elden Ring, which takes place in the Lands Between, a world created by George R.R. R. Martin. Although each of the Soulsborne games have similar gameplay, the aesthetic is what sets them apart. Speaking of aesthetic, I don't think I could do a Souls video without mentioning the sheer variety of weapons that From Software provides to the players. Want to bonk your enemies with a heavy hammer but also have the flexibility to flurry fast attacks? The Kirkhammer in Bloodborne is for you. Want to skewer foes with deadly quick ferocity? Then go with the Crystal Sage's Rapier in Dark Souls 3. Want to experience the same crippling pain as Guts from Berserk? Go with the Greatsword in Elden Ring. Bottom line, From Software provides a weapon for whatever playstyle you want. Even though I feel like the majority of players pursue strength or dex builds, there are plenty of options for magic weapons and spells as well. You have total freedom to play the game how you want. This goes right into my next point. I truly believe that the story and narrative takes the backseat in From Software games to gameplay and mechanics, and I think that's okay. The story is there, and the lore is available, but it isn't forced. It's optional. If you want to watch the entire Dark Souls lore, it's available on YouTube, and I highly recommend to watch it. It provides so much more depth, and you'll find yourself loving boss fights even more knowing the role that you have in the world building. This is the same for Bloodborne and Elden Ring as well, although I will admit that Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is much more story focused because unlike the other Souls games in which you create a character and it's more RPG focused, in Sekiro you play a preset character with an established storyline, and there isn't any weapon variety besides the prosthetics and gadgets. One could even argue that Sekiro isn't a Souls game, that it's only made by the same developer. But nonetheless, part of the reason that the Souls games attracted me in the first place was because knowing the story wasn't a necessity at all. I was able to hop into Dark Souls 3 without any prior knowledge from Dark Souls 1 or 2, and I loved it. As for the last reason why I think that Souls games are the best, look no further than the community. In every Souls game, you will see messages that other fellow players will put down and giving you hints or jokes as you continue your journey. You can even see blood puddles where players have died, and you can watch and see how they died so you can learn from their mistakes. Some of these interactions have made me laugh so hard, either from the message or the ridiculous way some of these players have died. Now, some have said that the Souls community is toxic, with all of them saying, get good, whenever someone asks for tips on the game, but honestly, this goes back to the initial point I made about failure. It's just tough love. But there are also a vast 
amount of people in the community who give tips and tricks of how to take down bosses or progressing in the world. Speaking of which, shout out to Fightin' Cowboy who helped me on my first playthrough of Dark Souls 3 helping me navigate to the next boss. In conclusion, I would recommend the Souls games to anyone who's looking for something new and exciting to play. In some ways, gaming has been ruined for me because every time I play a new game or a new release, nothing can replace the experiences I've had within the Soulsborne games. Nothing can create that epic feeling of fighting those bosses. I sincerely hope that From Software keeps making these amazing games, and I'm very much looking forward to their future projects. But let me know in the comments what your favorite Souls games are, and what you love most about these games. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I would love to make more content for you guys. See ya!